Why hello there and welcome back to another episode of Trader Steve's journey across Gilinor to collect as many rare items as he can get his grubby little mitts on. Trader Steve is starting his journey in the Grand Exchange chunk, but for every new rare item he can add to his collection that's worth more than 1 mil, he can unlock a new adjacent chunk, with Trader Steve's ultimate goal, obtaining a quest cape. Now in the last episode, I trained one of the slowest skills all the way to 99 just to be able to afford the one quest we've been working towards for the last couple of months, the Song of the Elves, and we finally have all of the requirements to complete the quest and unlock Privdinus. Now we're going through all this trouble and heartache to unlock the Bow of Ferdinand. It's the only way to really upgrade the power of my account, but today we're going to find out why unlocking this weapon is going to be even harder than I originally imagined. So we still have roughly around 22 mil left over from our Hallowed Sepulchre grind. I wish I had more, but unfortunately that's, uh, that's all we got. And it's finally time to get started with the Song of the Elves. We're going to go ahead and start it in our doin. I'm excited. We've been working towards this for so long. All the requirements are done. There's only one issue left, chunk requirements. And I imagine there's going to be at least a couple. Okay, so so far so good. We haven't actually had any new locations required, but it's time to enter the Grand Library, this absolutely behemoth of a light puzzle. I remember when I originally did this, uh, it took me two hours without the quest helper, so we'll see how long it takes me this time. Oh my god, yes, we are done. Still took a while, but still probably uh, twice as quick as the first time I did it, so that's a good improvement. <laughs> Alright, we got the Arrow of Doom on our mini-map. Where is this telling us to go? Okay, interesting. Just a little bit south of here. This is unfortunately a pretty useless chunk, but there's <laughs> no way around it. Well, it's time to spend some of that 20 mil, I guess. Okay, looking at the list here. One of the cheaper items is actually the Ancient Medallion, which we bought for about 4 mil. Unfortunately, not a very useful item, but it is on the list and it is one of the cheaper options. I don't think there's any content in this chunk at all besides this one random path we have to follow. <laughs> it's just in our chunk, just barely. I don't think it'll end up mattering, but hey, for now, we've only used one chunk. That's pretty good. Oh my god, now this is interesting. I didn't remember this at all, but we have to go to the Zalra chunk. That's actually kind of exciting, and it kind of sucks at the same time. Zalra is nice, I mean, I would be happy to have another moneymaker, but I think we'll have to unlock three chunks to go here, and yeah, it's not ideal from a me completing the series standpoint, but in the short term, hey, having Zalra is pretty sweet and there's no way around this. We're going to unlock it. We are so far into this, we are definitely finishing this quest no matter where it takes us. Okay, so we're going to have to buy a couple items here. I'm hoping maybe we only need two. I can't really tell from the map, but we're going to go ahead and buy the Monk's Robe Top G for 4 mil and the Crystal Armor Seed for 5 mil. The items are expensive now. They're just, they're going to be increasing in value so quickly and these are still some of the cheapest options. Okay, so first chunk we're going to unlock the Taranwin Charter Ship chunk, which, uh, like the name implies, does have the Charter Ship in it. I don't think there's any quest locations that go here, unfortunately, but there's no way around this. There's just, we have to walk through here. We now have a teleport location for Zora though, so that's kind of nice. Okay, so now is the moment of truth. Can we walk through a crazy diagonal here? I kind of doubt it. Uh, it doesn't look good. Ah, it's dead. Damn it. Okay. Well, we are going to need this absolutely horrid chunk right here that only has 10% of it on land or something. Okay, we have to come all the way back just for Anku gloves. I guess we'll go for those. 3.9 mil item. But with that, we should be able to unlock completely Zalra. not happy about this, but there is one benefit. This does unlock the Fairy Ring and Agility Shortcut. 
So we'll at least have that to go to Zora now if we didn't want to use the lander teleports for whatever reason. And with this, we've unlocked Zora, of course, and a couple clue scroll locations possibly as well. In 2024, Zora is not the best moneymaker, but it is good. Okay, so we dug for the clue scroll, but oh my god, immediately we're going to need one final chunk. And this one is going to actually be in the city of Pravdinus. Prif is made up of four chunks, and just to complete Song of the Elves, we need the southeastern chunk. Now, some of you might have noticed that Pravdinus uh, is on the overworld with the four chunks, but when you enter the city, you go to a separate instance. Now, I'm not really sure why this happens, but I've decided that because the chunks are clearly visible on the overworld, it would be a little bit overpowered to unlock the entire city just from completing the quest. And the reality is I don't technically need more than this southeastern chunk, or at least I don't think I will, but I guess we'll find out for sure when we unlock the city. Okay, final item here. We're going to buy this smoldering stone. Another five mil item. And that's all our money gone. I mean, if we need another chunk after this, we're going we're gonna to have to go make some money, I guess. But I think we'll be okay. So finally, we have our first Prifdinus chunk unlocked and maybe last. There's also going to be so much to explore here with loads of new shops, bosses, and creatures. These guys, though, look like they kind of escaped from the zoo. This happy bunch of critters are actually from Creator Crafted's new line of old runescape themed plushies, today's video sponsor. Creator Crafted has partnered with two-time Golden Gnome winner Witchcrafty to offer five new runescape plushies. They're insanely cute and like everything from Creator Crafted, incredibly high quality. The plushies are being sold in a limited run and are selling out really quick, so if you want to get one, now is the time. Creator Crafted has gathered community suggestions and has expanded their catalog of LED signs as well. Now you can pre-order awesome new designs like the Corrupted Twister Bow, that looks so cool, and even a Divine Spirit Shield. So to pick yourself up a new design before they sell out, I would highly recommend checking out Creator Crafted today. Click the link in my description or enter the code FLIPPING at checkout and you'll even get an extra 10% off your order. And once again, thank you to Creator Crafted for sponsoring. So this is a massive chunk unlock and we are going to get to know it intimately in the not so distant future. For now though, we don't have access to the city so we've really just unlocked a little uh, front of the city greenery, I don't know. But we now have this very important dig location. The boss fight just starts, what the hell? Oh, we definitely are not ready. Okay. We definitely misread the guide. <laughs> the phases switch constantly, not just once. Okay. Can't believe it, we have finally done it. The Song of the Elves is complete. That took a long time to get all the requirements for. But now we have access to Priv Dennis and a ton of new money makers. And look at all that experience as well, holy. It's time to enter the city. So now that we finally have the Song of the Elves done with, that means we can get a Bow of Ferdinand, right? Kind of. Getting this weapon is actually quite a bit more difficult than I originally anticipated, so there's a few issues. Now the first and most straightforward issue is, this weapon is over 100 million gold, which I of course do not have. So sure, we don't have the money for it yet, but it's a relatively simple issue to solve, just going to take a while. The next one is a bit more complicated. Now to fire the Bow of Ferdinand, you need charges on it. And to charge the Bofa, you need Crystal Shards. Now, you can get Crystal Shards doing a variety of different activities in Pravdinas, including things like woodcutting, mining, Zolcano, the Gauntlet, thieving, planting Crystal Acorns. There's a lot of options, but keep in mind we only have access to a quarter of the city, which means our options are somewhat limited. Now, normally as a main account, getting Crystal Shards 
can be pretty simple. You can buy enhanced crystal teleport seeds from the Grand Exchange and exchange them for crystal shards with an NPC called Amrod. Unfortunately though, Amrod is in the northwestern corner and I don't want to waste chunks to get over there just for this convenience. But not being able to use Amrod means that we have quite a grind ahead of us to get enough crystal shards to use the Bofa. Now obtaining crystal shards using just activities around Proof Dennis, usually you can earn about 10 to 20 crystal shards per hour. And sure, we could load those into our bow for Den and then we would get like an hour's worth of shooting out of it. So not really worth it, like a one-to-one -one input of time obtaining the shards and time firing the bow. It's just not, not worth it. So to realistically be able to use it, we need to corrupt the Bofa, but that takes 2,000 crystal shards. So I think we're looking at about a 100 hour grind in just this chunk to truly unlock the Bofa. Okay, we're gonna start off by uh, marking our chunk here. The chunk plugin doesn't seem to work in this instance here. Now let's have a look at what we have access to. Now luckily we have access to elves. Uh, pretty much all the chunks have them in them. And this means that we are able to thieve from them to get crystal shards and enhanced teleport seeds, although we can't exchange them for crystal shards. We can sell them and thieving from elves is one of the best skilling money makers. So I'm certain we're gonna be doing some of that. What else do we have? We have Zolcano. Uh, Zolcano is also a decent option for getting shards and decent for money as well. Besides that, we have a um, just a regular mine. Don't know if that's gonna be good for getting shards. And we have a couple trees. Unfortunately, no teak trees. Chopping trees and mining ore is not very good shards per hour, but hey, if I wanted AFK something, it could be a decent option. No clue how effective uh, <laughs> you trees are gonna be though. Okay, so it's time to get started with the Crystal Shard Grind. Now, I think the best place to get started is definitely going to be with Elf Thieving. I think it provides the highest shards per hour, or at least it's pretty comparable to Zulcano, but we're also going to be making the most amount of GP per hour as well. Plus, we still don't have 99 Thieving, so I think getting some Thieving experience, getting 99, altogether makes us the best method to get started with. Now, will that be enough to get me 2,000 Crystal Shards? No, and not even close, unfortunately. If we could get halfway, that would be pretty good in my books. Because although Elf Thieving is normally quite good, we are missing a couple important unlocks that make it better. For one, we don't have the RD Hard Diary, and we can never get that, unfortunately. We don't have the RKS Spellbook to get Shadow Step, and we don't have the Thieving Cape. So all that together is going to mean our pickpockets per hour are going to be a lot less. Now there are a ton of elves around here, so we really just need to find a good option, like one that's kind of stuck in a house. Luckily we already have the rogues outfit, we have dodgy necklaces, and we're going to also use the redemption method. So overall I think our pickpocket should be about 30% less, something around there, compared to what a main account would get at this level, but that's still pretty decent charge per hour. Okay, so I found this house a bit southwest of the bank. Currently we're getting about 100k to even experience per hour, which actually is not bad bad considering that at peak efficiency you're probably going to get 140k per hour. So really not too bad considering my level and all the upgrades I'm lacking. You can see the crystal shards are starting to stack up in the corner. We got 10 so far in about half an hour and we're starting this grind at pretty much zero money. We have about one mil to our name and not only do we need a bunch of crystal shards we also need to get over a hundred mil cash which this grind should also help as well. I don't think going to 99 Thieving will get me a hundred mil but should make a pretty decent dent in it. Okay, so I was buying Ancient Brews, um, but they got kind of expensive. Now, I noticed that Zamrak Brews are quite cheap, around a thousand gold each, and they do pretty much the exact same thing. Now, the Redemption method works essentially by using a very cheap potion to restore your prayer and proccing Redemption over and over and over again to get hit points back. It's cheaper than most food and allows you to stay for a lot longer. Not the end of the world because the bank's right here, but still increases my experience per hour and my shards per hour. Ah, uh, that's exciting. There's our first enhanced crystal teleport seed, and of course because we're wearing the rogues outfit, we get two of them. That's like a 4 mil cash infusion right there. We are going to keep them though, all the way to 99 just to see how many we get. But yeah, that's 4 mil added to our bank value. We already had one of these in our collection as well, so that's just going to be straight profit once we sell them. Alright, so here's our first level of many. That is going to be 94 thieving meaning we have five levels to go. It doesn't sound like much, but but overall we still had to get about six million total thieving experience, so that should be enough 
turn ourselves a fair chunk of change. Plus, we just reached 1775 total. Oh my god. <laughs> Sometimes I just look over and they're in my inventory. I didn't even know this. They're much more noticeable when they drop on the ground. That took another 1,000 pickpockets, more or less, so we're pretty much right on rate so far. So, unfortunately, no more crystal shards yet, but we are going to get a pretty big level, 95 thieving. Still getting roughly around 100k per hour. Honestly, the next few thieving levels aren't going to make much of a difference until, of course, we reach 99. Now, the reason why post-99 thieving could actually be reasonably worthwhile is because the thieving cape you get at 99 thieving gives you an extra 10% chance of successfully pickpocketing things, which is a lot when you're dealing with somewhat low pickpocket rates. Like, for example, right now, at my current thieving level of 95, we have only a 37% chance of a successful pickpocket, which is pretty low. But once we get to 99 thieving and get the cape, that's gonna bump up to probably around 44% or something around there, which is a huge increase. There it is, 96 thieving. Uh, we've gotten a couple more drops of the enhanced crystal teleport seeds. I think we're up to 10 now, uh, which means we're actually pretty underrated at this point, but I'm pretty confident it will even out by the time we reach 99. Oh, look at that. These things are up to 2.3 mil right now. Hell yeah, it makes me want to sell them, kind of. But no, 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 we should wait. Wait until we get 99. We're not that far away really now. Oh my god. We literally just logged in, walk over here, pickpocket two elves, get 4.7 mil. Look at that, beautiful. There it is, 97 thieving. Our XP per hour um, has actually been a bit higher, but that mostly comes down to RNG. We're looking at 123k per hour. Really, that's just luck. I mean, a few levels didn't make that big a difference. The only thing that's really going to change the game here is the Thieving Cape, which we're going to get in two more levels. Alright, so between 97 and 98, it looks like we ended up with eight more Enhanced Crystal Teleport Seeds, which is pretty good. Four for an entire level. Things are starting to even out a bit. There it is, the penultimate level, 98 thieving, 1.3 million experience more to go. How many more seeds can we get on the way to 99? Well, I guess we're gonna have to wait and find out. <laughs> so we've been working on this grind for a solid month at this point. I think it's gonna, in total, be about 50 hours going to 99 through elf thieving. Definitely a lot slower than the first time I did this on my main account because it's just like 20% slower without the RD Diary and Shadow Step. But even though it was a lot slower, we have done it. 99 thieving on Trader Steve, which is incredibly exciting. We also ended up getting 942 crystal shards just straight up from loot drops. So it took almost 50 hours to get around a thousand of them. So we're like halfway. We have another 50 hours at least of Priftinus content to corrupt the bow for a dinner. So I know, it's gonna be a while still, but I'm really happy we got this milestone done with. Now the real question is, how many enhanced crystal teleport seeds did I end up getting? Well, the answer is 36, because we already had one in the bank already, which is worth currently a whopping 78 mil, which is really nice. A huge boost to our cash stack. Uh, unfortunately, the BOFA has gone up to 130 mil, so we have another 30 mil we have to earn thanks to just price fluctuations, but regardless, we have made a good chunk of the money required to get the BOFA. Now, one thing I'm really excited to go get is the Thieving Cape. Luckily, we do have the chunk unlocked for it, which is in the Birth Orb chunk. We'll go ahead and grab that. Really nice. Uh, for one, we weren't wearing a cape for the entire grind. We looked like an idiot, but now we got the Thieving Cape and our XP per hour and charge per hour will be increased significantly. I really, really don't want to do more thieving. I think we'll take a break and try to do something else. But there's no doubt we'll probably come back here. It's just, I think, the quickest option. 
All right, I'm impatient. Let's just sell these off. We're gonna sell them off for 2150, which is 76 mil. Plus we had some cash just from thieving the elves and we have some other loot. We ended up with a fair bit of fire orbs, death runes and diamonds and whatnot. So in the end, our cash stack is up to 83 mil, which means we are for all intents and purposes about halfway to being able to use the Bofa, which is nice, but uh, I thought it would be closer. And definitely don't forget to check out Creator Crafted. They are offering 10% off right now using my promo code. So now's a great time to grab yourself a new plushie or LED sign. In the next episode, we're probably going to do some Zulcano. We've just done so much thieving, I want to mix it up. But realistically, with the thieving cape, this is going to be the quickest method. We are ending the episode off with 151 items obtained. So we're almost halfway, right? Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.